used my edge loop selection and scaling tools now to, to make a mushroom. So I'm starting off with the cylinder, which has uh, 12 rotation segments in it, three height segments. Um, it's about 20 radius, 200 height, and I've got an extra cap segment in it as well, so that I've got some uh, edges to work with there to get started on. So now that I've got my primitive set up, I'm going to hit C on my keyboard to make it editable. And you'll notice that the icon has changed. It's no longer a cylinder icon, it's the editable mesh icon. The other thing we've got to do, and this is really important, make sure your cylinder is selected. We're going to go to the Mesh menu, Commands, and Optimize. So what that does is it just makes sure that the caps and the body of the cylinder are all welded together into one piece. And now we can start modeling. So what I'm going to do is just cut some edge loops. I'm going to make a really basic sort of mushroom cap shape. And then I'm just going to start working with the um, edge loops and uh, see what I can do. So let's go into my edges mode. I'm going to right click and choose loop path cut. And I'm going to make a cut a little bit above the existing upper segment. I'm going to grab my scale tool, double click that loop, and I'm just going to scale this quite big. Straight away we can see we've started to make a bit of a mushroom shape already. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull that loop downwards a little bit. And as I pull it down, you can see we get a bit of a, uh, an overhang. It's definitely starting to look a little bit more mushroomy. But it's very sharp at the moment, and obviously I want to add a bit more detail into there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to right-click, grab my loop cut, make another loop, grab my scale tool, double-click this, and just scale that out a bit bigger. And what I might do is just break up this flat top on top of my mushroom a little bit. So let's double click one of those loops there. I'll scale that a little bigger and just move it down a bit. And because I'm dealing, you know, I'm creating a pretty organic kind of shape here, I want to see this smoothed out. So let's create a subdivision surface. So under create, we can go to generators, grab a subdivision surface and drag and drop our cylinder into the subdivision. So this is looking pretty mushroomy already, which is pretty good. So the great thing about this is we can, we can see this smooth, organic-looking mushroom shape while we're dealing and modeling with this low-poly cylinder. So now what I'm just going to start to do is just, again, scale and position these um, edge loops around. And it's up to you how you want to make your mushroom, whether it's sort of a, a pointy one or it's a sort of a, a broad, flat one. And if you do want quite a flat mushroom, we're going to have to take care of this point right at the top in the middle. Now, that's an actual point there. So if we go to points mode, we can grab that point that's right in the middle at the top of our, uh, the cap of our cylinder. And we can shift that down if we need to. Um, I actually quite like my, my slightly pointy mushroom, so I'm just going to undo a couple of steps and have this quite sort of pointy looking mushroom. Um, now, there's lots of different types of mushrooms. You can have a, a wide base on it or a thin base. I might make mine or thin stalk. Is it a stalk? Do you call a mushroom's base a stalk? I don't know. Anyway, I'm going to make this a bit narrower. The other thing I can do here is I can have quite a bit of variety in the, the width of these different edge loops so I can really get some quite organic shapes going on. And what I want to do is make sure there's plenty of sort of overhang in my mushroom, so I'm going to grab this loop that's inside it and just push that up a lot further. And maybe pull this down a little more. And now I'm starting to get a really interesting mushroomy kind of look. Now the other thing I want to do is I want to add some asymmetry to this, because this is quite an organic thing. It's not going to be perfectly symmetrical. It's going to look very computer generated and very unappealing if we leave it perfectly symmetrical. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to rotate this around a little bit. I'm going to tip the top of it over a little by selecting a whole bunch of these edge loops. 
So what I'm going to do is double click an edge loop, shift double click the next one and the next one in the cap, and let's grab this top one as well. And then if I grab my rotate tool, I could just rotate them all over a little bit. Now I can see the top of my mushroom is getting smeared off a little bit there because that point's getting left behind. So I might just need to grab that point, grab my move tool and just shift that across a bit so I don't have anything too odd going on with the top there. But so I've got a bit of asymmetry now. So just by selecting a bunch of those edge loops and tipping them over, I've got a bit of asymmetry. Now the other thing I could do is I could grab my edge loop that's in the middle here and I might just move that a little bit to the right because I can imagine that if this mushroom cap has got a little bit of weight to it and it's growing off to one side, it might sort of tip the mushroom and bend the stalk a little bit. So we can really start to get a little bit more creative and sculptural with this now just by shifting a few things around. So that's starting to look pretty appealing. The other thing is that if I look at the top of my mushroom, it's still perfectly round, which isn't really super accurate. I can't imagine that's how a real mushroom is. So maybe what I might do is just grab one or two segments of my mushroom of these uh, edges. So I'm not going to grab an edge loop for this part. I'm actually just going to grab several segments, top and bottom of the lip of the mushroom, and maybe I might just pull that bit down a little bit and maybe drag it inwards a little. Maybe I might do the opposite on the other side and just lift these up a little bit. And what I'm going to do is just work my way around the mushroom just using some selections of these inner and outer parts, uh, sorry, the, the top and the bottom parts of this uh, mushroom cap. And I can just add a bit of asymmetry. Maybe I can grab a few bits here and just start to add a little bit of um, a more organic look to this mushroom. So once I've finished, go back into model mode. And that's definitely starting to look pretty good. So really important to remember when we're dealing with our edge loops and with our, uh, our shaping of our objects, you know, what kind of look are we after? Do we want something that's really um, rigid and regular and uh, very sort of man-made looking? Uh, and if not, if you want to make something that's a little bit more, more organic, we can use edge loops, but we can also use them a little creatively. We can use parts of edge loops, um, or we could scale them unevenly. For example, I could grab a couple of edge loops here, and maybe I just scale them on one axis to really sort of squish this up. That's a little too far. Maybe just use a little bit of scaling, just so I've got something that's not completely regular. So that's really starting to look pretty good. And don't forget to name your stuff.